Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight is the first episode of Stay Home Stories. Um, This is basically a podcast format, so very limited editing, if any. Um, Just chatting about things and reading through some Reddit threads, so... uh, I will eventually be doing like some Poe stories and stuff like that too, but I thought we would start out casual with some Reddit stuff. And uh, I thought some grim, grim fairy tales would be good as well. So I do have some of those set aside. Um, For those who weren't over on the community tab, um, these are just basically a casual hangout session where we read some stuff and take our mind off of the pandemic. (laughs) And I am doing these ad-free because they're strictly for the purposes of providing some community and some content. Uh, I am not in a position right now to be able to make a lot of highly edited content, like my regular stuff. Um, I'm still working on catching up on a couple of things from last month. So... I didn't want to just leave you guys hanging though, especially with everything going on. And so I thought, well, I can do like a podcast format where it's like a whispered Wednesday essentially, but without whispering. And I will do some whispered stuff too. Um, My schedule right now is all over the place because uh, I work as the writer and content person and social media person for um, a healthcare data analytics company and they have made a bunch of tools that are strictly for doctors during this whole crisis and um the tools are really cool they make uh they basically use real-time data so that doctors can triage appropriately um so since a lot of places have really limited resources right now it gives them highly accurate information like above a 99 percent accuracy which i think is crazy um that basically tells the doctor, like, based on certain things, this person should be triaged, you know, as severe, this person probably needs a ventilator, this person's probably okay, and um, it's literally saving lives because doctors can make more informed decisions, so um, super helpful and really cool, Um, but since I'm doing all the content for all of that stuff, and I've been translating some things into Spanish and um, doing some other things like that, so it's just, I wear a lot of hats in the content field for that. And so, um, it's just been really, really busy. Um, not complaining. A lot of people don't have work and my job was remote before this happened. So I'm highly fortunate, um, in that regard, but that is why I have disappeared. So if I ever disappear, that's why, (laughs) um, just work. But, uh, obviously that's a priority and, um, so, yeah, but uh, I definitely wanted to do this particular series because I thought it would be fun to do something that was a little bit more casual and a little bit more laid back. I know I like listening to podcasts, especially if I'm by myself because it's like having somebody in the room and you just get to to chill. And so that's sort of what I wanted to provide with this Stay Home Story series. Um, say that 10 times fast. Uh, Like I said, this whole series is strictly for the purposes of the quarantine that we're all under, or we should be uh, right now, unless of course you're an essential worker, in which case, like, God bless you, because I can't imagine what that would be like. So if you are an essential worker and you are out doing your thing still, then thank you very much for doing that for us. (laughs) Um, I have not been outside my house in 14 days, (laughs) so um, I'm kind of a homebody, like, to begin with, so it hasn't been too traumatic, but, like, when the introverts start getting antsy, you know it's been a while, you know? That's all I'm saying. Uh, But I have asthma, so I am highly susceptible to this, and uh, the common cold tends to turn into, like, severe bronchitis, so for me. So I have absolutely no interest in finding out what this thing would do if it got introduced to my respiratory system. So I have been hibernating away. Um, but yeah, so I just thought I would introduce the series and yeah, for those of you who have missed the chatty intros and outros and me just being my 
weird unedited self and reading some stuff, then you will very much enjoy this. Um, for those who still complain that I talk too much in the outro, <laughs> you will hate this. Uh, you're probably not even here anymore. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how it goes, but let me know if you guys like this. If, it, you know, I'm sure most of you probably will. And, um, if most people do, then I'll keep doing them. I really, I would love to do one a day, but that's the ambitious, but I would like to do one every other day at least because like I said, there's almost no editing involved. So it's really just a matter of chopping off the dead space in the beginning and end of this, uh, you know, audio file and then throwing a filter on it and posting it. So, um, yeah, so this series is ad free. Um, if I do any regular videos, they will not be, but I'm, I'm trying to like use fewer ads. I don't think that I actually use that many to begin with. I try to put one every like 15 or 20 minutes, which is better than Hulu, which I pay for. So, um, but I, you know, I know they're obnoxious in the middle of stories, so I am trying to curb that a little bit, but, um, also wanted to say thank you to my new patrons as well, because some of you have signed up, even though I have posted almost no content. So, um, I can only take that to mean that you just want to support. And I just really appreciate that. And also to the new subscribers, cause I haven't been around in a while and, uh, we've seen, we're almost to 11,000. Is that right? Is that right? Let me check. Let me check in real time. I'm going to check this together. <laughs> yeah. 10,861. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed or really participated at all in the channel or its success. Um, also, uh, if you purchased something from the store, uh, I didn't get my notifications. So I just checked in today and I was like, well, shit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have not been ignoring you. I just didn't see it. And I do live with people who can leave the house, uh, fortunately. So uh, I can totally pack that up. And of course, I will be everything in my place is sanitized to hell because, like I said, I have asthma. My mom has lupus and my grandma's 96. So we are best friends with Lysol in this house and Clorox. So um, yeah, of course, I will be shipping those out safely. But uh, yeah, very sorry about that. Just didn't get the notification. And I was like, thank you, Shopify. <laughs> Excellent. So anyway, um, I think that's all the chatty housekeeping. Um, I just ran across this Reddit thread and it said it was from talk taking L's for life. I don't, okay. That's the user who put it up and it says, what is the most paranormal or unexplainable event you have witnessed? So I thought we would just read through this. Also, my voice is shit right now because allergies. So <laughs> sorry if it's not as relaxing as usual. Okay. So this one was from Najma and it says, one day I was with my friends and suddenly my head started getting heavy and my vision began to white out at the point where I couldn't see anything at all. I immediately thought that someone could have drugged me, and I asked my friends to help me walk to a place where I could get some air and sit down. My sight was coming back, but I couldn't speak or express anything. I couldn't respond or answer what my friends were asking. Somehow I got into a trance, and it felt like I was seeing my surroundings from an above-me perspective. My friend called my mom, and she picked me up, and I still couldn't respond until I got home and went to the bathroom. Three days later, my mom received a call from my grandpa, and I immediately knew what was going on. He told her that my dad had passed away and was found dead in his bathroom. I lived with my mom, and my dad used to live in another state. And the forensic report showed that he died in the, on the exact date and probably around the exact moment that I had that episode. That is crazy. Uh, a response to that says... Something similar happened to my mom when my grandpa passed away. They say that when you die, your soul reaches out to your loved ones. One day when my grandpa was in the hospital, all of a sudden my mom felt physically horrible, like her blood pressure dropped. She had trouble breathing, was very dizzy, and so on. Eventually it subsided, but she got a call minutes later that her dad had just passed, so maybe it was like he was saying goodbye. Hmm. 
That's like creepy and sweet. You know what I mean? The next one said, I work with a donated human tissue. That's a, that's a way to start a story. <laughs> we process stuff like bones, tendons, and skin for transplant. The controlled work area that we process the tissue in definitely has some weird things happen in it. Small stuff, like repeated or inexplicable equipment failure, tools falling off flat surfaces, and sometimes the tissue itself will react strangely to processing. For instance, a young donor whose tissue will fall apart or exhibit other poor disposition for one reason or another. Sometimes a donor will like will have so many problems befall their processing that it just feels like they didn't want their former body parts to be transplanted. I've definitely gotten strange vibes while working. I'm not saying that they are knowingly or purposefully haunting us, but there is an energy there that is hard to deny. Um, a response to that says, I will be working in a cadaver lab next spring for school, and I'm absolutely terrified of stuff like this happening. My dad worked in one while he was in school, and has some weird stories about being in there alone at night. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, this one's sad. If you don't like stories about animals dying, you might want to skip ahead for, let's see, probably about five, four, well, probably about two minutes, two, three minutes. It's a short read. Uh, my stepdad found our puppy Eddie on the side of the road. Someone had thrown him out of a moving car, and he had broken legs, broken teeth, a swollen and closed eye, and was severely dehydrated. Oh. My stepdad took him to the vet and paid quite a bit of money for surgeries to get Eddie fixed up. He got attached to the dogo, so we ended up adopting him. After that, even though he was the family dog, he was best buds with my stepdad. Anywhere the stepdad was around the house, he would find Eddie tagging along. Eddie and I grew up together. He died while I was in college, and my parents buried him in a pet cemetery. Since it was sort of sudden and I was far away, I never got to say goodbye. A few months after that, I had a dream where Eddie comes and finds me. His hair is matted and dirty, and his flesh looks kind of rotted, but he's wagging his tail and seems really happy to see me again. Eddie starts leading me down a hazy path, and the farther we go, the faster his tail wags. Finally, we get to this giant wall of mist that extends across the entire horizon and rises higher than I can see. Eddie gets real close to it before trotting back to me. He licks my hand, gives me a couple of, no of nose boops, and whines a little. Then he turns around again and starts to do that happy dog prance toward the wall until he finally passes through it. I can sort of see his outline jumping up and down excitedly next to a human-shaped figure. I jog after Eddie and reach my hand out to touch the wall, hoping that I'll be able to pass through it too. That's when my cell phone rings in real life, waking me up. When I answer it, my mom is on the other end, crying. My stepdad had just died of a heart attack. Oh, that's like, gives me chills. That's kind of a nice story, even though it's sad too. Yeah, I really apologize for my voice tonight. It is trash, <laughs> but... Allergies suck. <laughs> this one says, I was a kid, maybe 10 years old. I came inside in the evening after playing outside in the backyard. I stopped by the exterior door to take off my shoes and just happened to notice that the basement door across the room was closed and deadbolted. It was an old door that didn't stay totally closed unless it was deadbolted. I look down to untie one of my shoes and I hear a loud bang and I look up to see the basement door wide open. I nope the fuck out of there with my shoes still on. My parents were in the other room and didn't hear a thing. I went back later, and the door and lock were completely undamaged. I have absolutely no idea what caused it, and I can't really come up with any rational explanation, but I was pretty afraid of going into the basement for a while. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. I feel like some of these stories, just as a side chat, um, I feel like some of these stories don't sound that bad unless you imagine being there. Because I've had some weird things happen in this house. I could probably do a whole, like, friggin' two hour long video on this house alone. But, um, 
the house that I live in is really crazy. And I've just had really weird things happen that when I tell them to other people, I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound that bad. But like at the time, it's really creepy. You know what I mean? So like, for instance, uh, we had this glass dish that was like a heart dish and it would set up uh, on the like the tank of the toilet. You know what I mean? And so we set it there and it had some shells in it and just little things like that, little knickknacks. And um, one day I was in the bathroom and like our bathroom is set up so that um, there's like if you or if you walk in the door on your right side is the like the mirror and the counter and then the toilet and then right in front of you is a shower and the wall to your left has almost nothing on it except for the towel racks. And um, it's not the biggest bathroom, but it's like, it's like big enough, you know. Um, and uh, I was, I was standing with my back to the wall with the towel racks and I was, you know, brushing my teeth or whatever. And all of a sudden, this glass dish flies from the, where it was sitting on the tank of the toilet across the room and smashes on the opposite wall. Not like it fell off onto the floor. Like we're in California. Sometimes if something just falls off onto the floor, I'm like, maybe we had a trimmer and I didn't notice like whatever. Um, but no, it flew in like a straight line quickly all the way across the room and smashed against the opposite wall. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that was really creepy. And my mom ran in and she's like, what happened? And I thought I was going to get in trouble because neither one of my parents really believe in paranormal things or they didn't then. I think they're warming up, but <laughs> they really didn't believe in anything like that then. Um, but I think my mom must have seen the look on my face because I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> and so I explained what happened and she was like, well, okay, we'll just clean it up then. But she never said like, if she thought I had done it, she would have told me. Um, but yeah, she just sort of cleaned it up and didn't think anything of it. But um, yeah, that was really crazy. But like sometimes if you tell that story to somebody and you're like, oh, I was brushing my teeth and a dish flew across the room, broke. They're like, okay, because <laughs> it doesn't sound too bad on its face. But then if you imagine that, like being alone in a room and a dish like flies a little, you know, whatever, like flies across the room. Like that's not normal. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, that's like one of the weird things that has happened here. There's been a lot of weird things that happen here though. <clears throat> Excuse my voice and my clearing of the throat. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I think that kind of stuff is really strange. Um, we've had things in the garage that have like inexplicably flown off their shelves and um, have been pushed from like the center of high cupboards off the edge um, and stuff like that. And I'm 5'4", like I'm short, I can't reach that stuff. So I definitely didn't do it. And it, they're taller than anybody that I know of. <laughs> so um, it's not like they could have just like somebody could have been tricking me, you know what I mean? So yeah, but um, there's just been, I need to find some of the EVPs I've taken here too and do like a My House series. But um, but yeah, that is one of the things that I just can never figure out how that happened. <laughs> but um, But yeah, and then I was telling this story the other day, but... Um, when there's a back bedroom, which is the master bedroom, and it has an attached, very small bathroom, um, and uh, that's where the shower, it, well, one of the two showers is, um, and that was the shower I used to use, and uh, so I was, I was in there, you know, and I was taking a shower, and I heard the phone ring, so I sort of shut the water off, and I was like, listening, and I heard what I thought was my mom, but it sounded too young. It sounded like a, like, a, a, like a girl, like a, maybe, I don't know, like a teenager or something, maybe younger, but it sounded like a young girl, but I thought, you know, whoever it was, was crying and they were on the phone. 
and they were upset, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. So I hurried up and finished up my shower because I thought my mom was on the phone because who else would it be? And um, so I got out of the shower and, you know, got dressed and ran out. And I was like, what's going on? Like, what happened? And my mom was looking at me like, what's wrong with you? Like, nothing happened. And I was like, well, who were you on the phone with? She goes, well, I wasn't on the phone. I was like, you were just on the phone and you were crying. And she was like, you had like drugs in your shower. I don't know what's going on. So she apparently had never picked up the phone and I've never liked that back bedroom ever. I don't like the whole house, but I've never liked that back bedroom. It's always freaked me out. So I kind of pushed it aside and I didn't think anything of it. And I thought, well, maybe, I don't know. I was just hearing things or whatever. So fast forward a few years, it was actually just a couple years ago. Um, and I've been telling my, my parents stuff about this house consistently and they don't believe me. And so my dad was outside talking to the neighbor and he comes inside with this weird look on his face. And he's like, you're never going to believe what the neighbor just told me. And I was like, I probably would. What? <laughs> and he was like, apparently we've stayed in this house longer than anyone else has. And, um, he was like, most people don't stay as long as we have. <laughs> I'm like, it's because most people are smart. Um, and he was like, apparently that back bedroom, the master bedroom, uh, the last person or the person before that who was here, one of the people in the home's history, uh, tried to commit suicide in that room and by a drug overdose, apparently. And a young, her young daughter found her and called the ambulance from that room. Yeah. So that day came back into my mind and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> that must have been like a residual type of thing that I was hearing that day. So yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of weird shit. Like, uh, I need to find them. I've sent them to my friends before, so they're probably still in the files on messenger, but, um, I'll have to dig them up, but there's been some EVPs in the house too. Um, like there was one where I left my phone recording and no one else was home at the time. It was just me. All the windows were shut. There was no parties going on or anything um, around us. And it was really quiet, which is why I picked that time. So I put the phone in the master bedroom. I shut the door, went all the way to the other end of the house. And my dog was with me. So I know she didn't bark during this entire time. And I listened to this, this thing back. And part of what I heard was, uh, a, a woman, somebody said something and then a woman, sh uh, shushed whoever it was who had spoken. So it was like they were communicating. Um, it didn't sound like isolated events. Um, somebody said something I couldn't understand. And then there was like a, shh, uh, and then a dog barked and we lost a dog, um, while we were living in this house. So I was like, oh. Maybe it was my old dog, <laughs> but I don't know if it was her or not. But, um, but yeah, we've just had like some real strange, strange things happen. Um, when I was in middle school, actually, I had a couple of my friends over one of these girls I'm still friends with too, but, um, uh, I had a couple of friends over and we, it was like, it was like a sleepover. So it was really, really late. And I think we all woke up at the same time. It was like, I don't know, like two in the morning or something. And, um, you know, we were all up. So we just decided to like whisper to each other and, you know, stay awake or whatever. And, um, all of a sudden my friend was like, can I go get some water? And I was like, yeah, you're fine. Just like turn the nightlight on so that you don't scare somebody if somebody else gets up to get water or whatever. Um, so she did. And, uh, then I heard the sliding glass door open and then shut and lock again, which was like in the other room. And she came back in and she was like, who's chanting? And I was like, what? <laughs> and so we all kind of opened the window and we were listening and there was this like Gregorian chant going on. It was super bizarre. And I've never, the only other time that I've heard that came after this, but we do live next to a Catholic church. So, but, but it's two in the morning. 
<laughs> like, first of all, I've lived in this house for over 20 years, and I've never heard singing coming from that church, not once, not ever. So, um, and it's too far away for the intensity of the volume. Like, there's, it's on the other side of the house anyway, so it wouldn't have, we wouldn't have heard it from where we were. But I've been in this house now for 20 years. I've never heard singing coming out of that church. So uh, it's not like a cathedral or anything. It's just a, you know, um, shit, what's it called? Uh, parish. Yeah. And um, so we were just very confused. It was pretty, but we were like, where the hell is this coming from? Um, so we didn't think a lot of it. And then I think it was a few months after that, I was recording something from... <laughs> So, uh, depending on your age, you won't understand this, but, um, if you're much younger than me, this won't make sense. Um, but I was recording from the radio onto a cassette tape, <laughs> um, directly because I was just that high tech. And, um, uh, when you do that, you really shouldn't be able to hear anything from the room that you're in because you're just taking audio from like the radio straight onto the cassette, right? Um, and so I was recording it that way. And I mean, I've done it that way before. Obviously, I don't do that anymore. But I, I would had done it that way before and had been having full conversations in my room and like that never got picked up. So I was making a mixtape, if you're not familiar. Um, and so I was like, let's listen to this tape back, right? So I was listening to the tape with a friend who had come over a little bit later. And um, I was like, I finally recorded that song. She was like, sweet. <laughs> so I was uh, playing the song for her. And in the background, we hear this Gregorian chant. And it wasn't like a chant that was part of the song. Like it was interrupting the song. And I was like, that is so fucking weird. Like what is with this chant? And that's come up in a couple of EVPs. It's come up um, a couple of other random times in the house, too. Uh, I don't, don't mind it that much, really, because I think it's kind of comforting. So, like, live your best afterlife, I guess. But, um, yeah, I don't know what is going on with that. But that's something that we've definitely heard a few times. So, yeah really interesting things happen in this house. Maybe I should just make stay home stories all about my paranormal experiences and maybe some of my let's not meet stories. But um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of paranormal shit that's happened in my life. So I don't know. Um, and then this is almost at a half hour, which is about where I want to keep these episodes. So I will tell you about the haunted Santa. Um, and then I will let you go for the night and I will try to come back tomorrow. We'll see how this goes. But, um, the other story that I will tell you about is of this little Santa that we have. Uh, we have a Santa that is, um, one of the things where like it walks and rings a bell and it plays this droney like music. Obviously it plays Christmas music. Um, but it plays like all the Santa songs, basically. Um, we have a reindeer that does the same thing, but it plays Jingle Bells and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, obviously. Um, so we, my mom and I, it was probably like summer, like maybe a couple years ago, a few years ago. And we were in the house and all of a sudden we hear this sa Santa go off and we were like, what in the hell is going on? And so we find the Santa and it's like in the closet where it's supposed to be. And it's just doing its thing. Just playing like, like, like you have to press a button to get the thing to start and you have to turn it on. And we did neither of those things. So at first I thought like, maybe it's just a glitch. It's super old. We've had it since like the wise men showed up. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, maybe, maybe it's just a glitch. Maybe it's just old. Maybe the wiring got confused. I don't know. And, um, so my mom was like, you know what? I bet it is. I bet it's a battery. She's like, I bet it needs a new battery. I was like, yeah, you're probably right. So she opens the back. And, um, if you've seen horror movies, you, you already know what happened. Um, there was no fucking battery in this thing whatsoever. <laughs> 
So uh, we just sort of put the Santa back and went about our day because neither of us wanted to talk about it. I was like, and you're telling me this place isn't haunted? She's like, shut up. <laughs> so then we thought that was the end of it, but apparently this Santa had one more middle finger up its sleeve because um, we, we had basically made a joke, which was the bad thing to do, but uh, it was a couple Christmases ago. I think it was only two years ago. And uh, we brought the Santa and the reindeer out. Rudolph behaves, okay? Rudolph, Rudolph got bullied for no reason. He's, he's good. He's fine. He doesn't act at, he plays his fucking song and he calls it a day. You know, that's how I expect a toy to behave. Uh, Santa, though, he's just, I don't know, maybe he's tired of Mrs. Claus. I don't know what's going on, but that doll is starting to freak me out. So we, um, got him out of the cupboard. We set everything up because we were getting ready to decorate. And all of a sudden we hear happy birthday. <laughs> Same droney music, but it's happy birthday. Don't know if you're aware but happy birthday isn't exactly a um, Christmas song, nor is it programmed into either of those toys. <laughs> uh, so yeah, when we had gotten everything out, my mom and I were like, oh, hopefully he doesn't go off script again, like kind of joking about the doll. And uh, and he did, he, um, he went off script. I can only assume he was singing happy birthday to Jesus. So um, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know what to tell you about that, but um, that doll is starting to freak me out just a little bit. So maybe we don't need Santa. Maybe we're okay with reindeer. Ru reindeer? Rudolph. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, um, I, I don't know. And the, the Santa rings a bell too. He has a bell in his hand. And so, um, there's was one other time that I was walk. I was home alone though. I have no witnesses for this, but I was walking down the hall and I heard a bell come. This was before my grandma lived with us. So I didn't have anybody ringing a bell at that point. Uh, and I was walking down the hall and out of the closet, I heard this, it wasn't like a full ring, but it was just like, ding. like, you know, if you kind of half ring a bell while you're holding it on its side, which is the position that it's in. If you're not, if the doll isn't walking, like moving, and uh, I just, I opened the closet and I was just like, you fucker. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we have a, we have a sassy Santa doll is what we have. Maybe it's a satanic sassy Santa. I don't know, but uh, that's enough alliteration for one night, I suppose. But anyway, um, those are my crazy stories and a couple from Reddit as well. But um, yeah. Uh, if you guys want to hear more stories about my weird ass life, <laughs> I would be happy to tell you all about them. We still need to do a 10,000 subscriber special thing too. Um, I'm really trying to plan a live stream, but planning a live anything in my life right now <laughs> in, in the house that I'm in is really difficult. So I may do an impromptu live stream soon. Um, so yeah and i'm sorry if you hear a growly burpy noise at any point throughout this my dog is over in the corner snoring and uh making noise so uh yeah i don't know if that's come across but um i was holding her a little bit ago and then i decided to put her down so there was a slight gap in, it probably didn't pick up. It probably sounded seamless, but, um, I did have to edit out a little, a little gap because it sounded like I was burping, <laughs> but it was just my dog <laughs> making noises. But, um, yeah, she was very put out that I put her down, but she, she snorts when she sleeps and it's like the cutest thing ever, but also not conducive to recording. So Anyway, um, that's all I have for tonight for this episode of Stay Home Stories. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave the rain going. I'll probably put rain behind this. Um, I will leave that going and have it taper out as usual. And um, if you're using this to fall asleep and you're still awake, be sure to turn off autoplay and that way 
you won't have to be jarred awake by an ad. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I will see you guys soon and I will try to get another, I'm still <laughs> editing the uh, collaboration with Nina Nightmare too. I'm almost done with that, but I had to basically redo the whole thing because um, the audio files kept getting jacked. I swear that video is haunted. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but um, I've had to re-record my part twice now. So yeah, <laughs> I'll be very happy when that is up because I feel terrible. It's over a month late. So um, yeah. Anyway, um, that's it for tonight. I hope you guys are staying safe and sane and uh, finding ways to fill your time and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.